Hi guys, I wanted to do a tutorial to show you guys how to make one of these knitting, uh, knitted, um, I really don't know exactly what the actual name of this yarn is. I call it net yarn. Um, I sell these scarves up at uh, the mall here in Israel and I've had a few people ask me how I do it and I've demonstrated <clears throat> to a few people. But I did say I would put up a tutorial on my website. Um, so this is going to be it. This is the medium size. They come in much larger and they also come in smaller. For this size, uh, I use the, I'm in millimeter standards out here, so I'm, I usually use a five millimeter that can, uh, because it's being used by another scarf, which, uh, you'll see in a minute, because I'm going to show you how to end on, uh, how to end one of these scarves. I'm just going to use this, uh, size four millimeter just to show you how to start it. And that uh, size 5 is, uh, I believe, a size 8 in U.S. standards. Okay, so first what you want to do is open the yarn with the thicker part, the shinier part here, is at the bottom. Okay? And usually I like to leave a little on the end here just because I, I use it to tie a knot in later on and uh, just make it look a lot more cleaner so what you want to do is get your needle let me go a little zoom a little closer here okay you want to enter from the back and I always go five each time I make a no matter what size scarf I always go five so you want to go behind because it's the easiest way to grab the yarn when you're knitting. So just get your needle and pick up. Let's see if I can get any closer here. I'll show you again. I'm going to get your yarn and what you want to do is go from behind and just pick up one of the nets and then going through the next one from behind and then going through the next one from behind same for this one until you've gotten five on your, your needle and people work this different I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm right-handed, but I found it's easier for me if I kind of do it like the left-handed method to feed my yarn from the left instead of from the right. So I take it in my hand like this. Sorry for the red. My son was messing with his red marker over his grandma's house. Sorry about that. I forgot about that. Um, anyway, you go in through the bottom just like you would normally knit see you go going through the bottom like that and when you would usually feed from this side I'm going to feed from the left because it's so much easier for me to spread out the yarn with my left hand and I usually hold my left this well, I usually hold my main needle here on my leg or something just to keep it steady while I work with this one and the net yarn. So this one's just basically held still. It's just there to hold my loops. Okay, again you want to go from behind. This one is really close, so if they're if they're too close, I like to skip it. But for the most part, I go through each loop. You pull it through and out. Going through like normal knitting. Spread out your and net and usually after the first one I go into the very next one each time at the beginning of a row if it's too tight this next stitch is too tight up to your work I always skip it on the very first stitch but after that I always go into the the nearest one and you just pull it through
and then off your hook. You're essentially just exchanging one loop for another. Put it through, and I'm holding, these are the, that's the main stitch, and this is the loop I just added. I just pull it up like normal knitting and off. And off again. And I'll show you one more time. Go in this direction. Just do the same thing. Hold your yarn where you can spread it out as easily as you can. I keep this needle taunt and held while I use this needle to basically gather the yarn and pull it off the hook. Go in, gather the yarn off the hook. It's essentially just a regular knit, the garter stitch. It's just going through one loop and adding one loop, pulling it through, going through one loop and exchanging it for another. And make sure uh, that you count because sometimes these um, you can lose a stitch. So just try to make sure that you count whenever you're doing this to make sure you do five stitches. This yarn tends to want to twist, so you're going to be constantly trying to straighten it out. Okay, let me uh, show you. This is what it looks like. When you go back and forth like that, back and forth, it ends up being like this. And the prettiest part of it, I think, is when it starts to become all messed up, like this. But at the beginning, it always comes out like that, like so uniform. See how it's like this, and then eventually it starts to mess up and become more of a ruffle scarf. The reason why it does this is because it's um, it's free you know when you first start to do it it hangs so it's mm, just stays uniform like this but as you keep going it gets caught on things and it'll start to twist as you work back and forth and it becomes like this so if you can hold or get something to hold the the bottom once it gets big enough get something to hold hold the bottom and then keep working back and forth, you know, knitting back and forth. And as you do that, it's going to become like this part. It took me a while to figure that out because I would get like this uniform stuff, you know, like that much of it. And I'd be like, no, and I'd rip it all out. I'd be so mad because it didn't look as cool. It doesn't look as beautiful as this part. And I tried different ways and I finally figured out how to get it to stop doing this. So you just basically want to hold it, and even if you want to twist it yourself a little bit while you're working it, just make sure that um, that you hold it like with your knees, or if you've got some other idea to hold it, so that when you start to work, you're not going to get that such uniform look. You'll get more of the, the pretty ruffle kind. Okay, I left this open because I wanted to show you guys how to how to finish off one of these scarves how I do anyway okay when you get to the end you 
We've got just a, a little bit left. I think I could probably do another row here. No problems. This is a little bit more difficult for me to do because I usually have my needle, this main needle that I just hold still. Like, um, you know, caught on my leg or something, holding it still so that I can just work off of it. I don't really touch this needle much. I just basically use it to hold my stitches like this and then I'll just work from it. It's just there to hold my stitches. Okay, I'm going to show you now how to how to take it off and it's like normal knitting. Knit one stitch and two stitches. This is, I mean it's like normal cast off when you knit. You get two stitches off and you want to take the first stitch, pull it over your needle, leaving that second stitch on. And then you do it again. to this last stitch here. Okay, and then you've got this last stitch left and you've got some of the yarn left. What I do is just the leftover yarn on the end that hasn't been knitted, I just kind of twist it hold my loop with my finger like this and basically I just use this like to tie a knot I stick the yarn through the loop like that and then I stick my finger here and tie a knot pull this part down as close as you can to the scarf. That way the scarf itself will hide it. Cut off the excess that you have here. Not that much because you don't want it to untie. Just make sure it's good and tight. And then when you have the scarf pulled down over it, you don't see it. And then I go back to the beginning. Where I left that little extra that I showed showed you before. I like to leave a little extra hanging so that I can do this at the end. And so you do the same thing. Grab the excess yarn, twist it so that you can work with it better. And then I open up the bottom of the scarf. This is the twisted part. And if you let it go, you can see that it's it's, it's basically, you know, going around and around. This would be the next the next one. See, I knitted here and it came around this way. You just want to use the bottom of one of these as a holder. So you can grab like two of these here, make a make a loop. Let's see if I can show you better. See, you can grab any of them. You can grab these or this one, but try to get as close as you can to the middle of the scarf because you want it to be able to be hidden. Then you take your ex your excess, twist it. And put it through that loop like you did the other one. And 
and then again hold it with your finger try to get the loop to come down as tight as you can here and then tie a knot and again pull the knot as close to the center as you can cut off most of the excess yarn then cover it with a scarf and that's it that's basically how you make these and you can do the same with uh, the bigger netted I have never made a smaller netted one so I'm not sure about that but I can tell you for the bigger netted ones and the medium netted ones that that's the way it's done the reason why uh, I make these only the five stitches for the large and five stitches for the medium I used to do seven I was told seven but it just made it wider and a lot more people preferred longer scarves so they could ruffle it up on their necks and it would look so much better I typically tell people when they put it on I fold it in half like this put it around their neck and I tell them to put one under and put one over that way they can have this first part that's sticking up hang down and it's like they have three rows of ruffles and this is where their neck is so they really have this pretty ruffle going down there anyway this is the tutorial for the net scarf I hope that it was helpful and that uh, you guys can start making your own and I would love to see the colors that uh, you guys get in the states please share on my Facebook page and uh, please subscribe thanks for watching